Folks, welcome to worship for February 21, 2021. This is the first Sunday in Lent, and we are Collingwood Presbyterian Church. Oh. We're glad to be together, and we are glad to welcome anyone who is listening other than on Zoom and all the people who are watching on Zoom and participating. Let's begin with our prelude. Dennis playing the prelude on the tune Beach Spring. Thank you, Dennis. That was lovely. Announcements this morning. Um, if you have not received a Lenten packet and you would like one, call the church office. Uh, well, there are a few left and some extra pieces of them. We can put something together for you. Um, one great hour of sharing. This is something, it's a, an, an offering that is uh, <clears throat> part of the PCUSA and we Pay attention to this throughout Lent and make our donations by the end, by by Easter. I've been thinking a lot about one great hour of sharing in this last week because, you know, I hear the horror stories of what's going on in Texas and other states in the South, and I think, wow, how can I help? And then I think, you know, I have helped because I've given to one great hour of sharing, and that's what those donations are used for. That's one of the things. So if you have ever given to One Great Hour of Sharing, know that it's very possible that some of what you gave has gone to help people in Texas in this last week and will continue to do so. Um, and <clears throat> you are certainly welcome to give this year. There is some information in your packet about One Great Hour of Sharing. 
Let's move to looking at the packet. Just to remind you, you have a devotional booklet that you can look at every day. And for today, you will need an index card. This is for writing down something in the service that you want to remember. There's a separate index card for each worship service. Um, if you were not with us on, good, on Ash Wednesday, take your dirt and plant it and put it in a pot and plant your seeds. I don't think anybody got carrot seeds, but that was the only, uh, it, it was a, a good image there. So we wanna see on Easter what we've got growing. I don't trust that I will grow things well because I never do, but we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, today, you've got a little bag in your packet with a couple of marbles or stones in it. It's called the examine bag. We're gonna be using those during the sermon today. And you have in your packet, a piece of paper that says Alleluia on it. And we're going to bury our Alleluia's because it is Lent and we don't use the happy word Alleluia in Lent. So I'm just gonna roll mine up and I'm going to put it in my purple bag. And I may pull it out once or twice over the course of Lent and color it so that on Easter morning, when we all dig up our buried alleluias, some of them might be pretty colorful. Are there other announcements that I've missed? Then let us move on to our opening meditation. <clears throat> Jesus calls us. Jesus calls us or the tumult, the tumult of competing demands from family and friends, work and church life, competing demands and tough decisions. In the midst of all that, Jesus calls us to follow him. Christian, follow me, he calls. And we think, oh yes, oh yes, I want to do that. Oh yes, I should do that. Oh yes, I should want to do that. But Jesus, first let me help my children. They're having a hard time right now. But Jesus, first let me work on my house. It really needs some attention if we're going to be able to sell it one of these days. But Jesus, first let me get my finances settled. Jesus calls us, Christian, follow me, and we want to, but stuff keeps coming up. There are so many other things we'd like to be doing, so many other things we feel we ought to be doing. Jesus calls us, Christian, follow me, but have you seen what some Christians are up to these days? Maybe this isn't such a good time to claim that title. Jesus calls us, Christian, follow me, but it's hard. It's hard, and stuff gets in the way. Stuff gets in the way, thorns rise up, and we're not sure where he's headed. Help us, Lord, Lamb of God, help us. Amen. Our first hymn is Jesus Calls Us. Each idol that would keep us 
Thank you, Dennis. Sherry, the call to confession. And the call to confession. God calls us to the path of righteousness, the path of repentance and behavior that is pleasing to God. And Proverbs tells us that in the path of righteousness, there is life. But often we find that path difficult and filled with thorns. Let us confess to God the ways we miss the mark trusting in God's grace and love. And moving on to the prayer of confession. And the prayer of corporate confession. Redeeming God, how easily we say we would follow you, but how often we live as if we don't have a clue what that means. We choose to gossip about our friends rather than surrounding them with love. Our competitive nature wills us to win at all costs when we could be engaged in costly service. Forgive us, Holy One, set us free to serve in love and compassion. Help us to feast on the fruit the Spirit offers to us. Put us on the path of faithful discipleship as we walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord God said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. 
I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Brothers and sisters, in Christ, all God's promises are yes. Through Christ, our minds and hearts are cleansed, healed, and renewed. Thanks be to God. Having received God's peace, let us extend that peace to each other. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace to everyone. Peace to everyone. Peace, everybody. Peace. 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 Okay, Sherry, the prayer for illumination. And the prayer for illumination. Through God's word, O Holy Spirit, bring us closer to our Savior and prompt our hearts to sing with gratitude for your gift of salvation. In the strong name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And the first scripture comes from Psalm 16, 8 through 11. I keep the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence, there is joyful or fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You have in store 
Our second scripture re reading is from the Gospel of Luke, the ninth chapter. As they were going along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. To another, he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but, first, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, our God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight. You who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. For the five Sundays of Lent this year, we'll be talking about thorns, the thorns we experience in our lives and the crown of thorns that Jesus was given to wear. Usually I follow the lectionary in choosing scriptures, but this time I'm veering off so that I can do this sermon series. So today in the year of Mark, we have um, a, we have thorns on the path with a text from Luke 9. Thorns on the path, as in the path of following Jesus. You know, some versions of Christianity teach that once you've made a decision to follow Jesus, your life will be smooth and easy. And I think most of us would say, yeah, not so much. I remember a custodian at one of my previous churches who was really distressed because that's what his church taught him. And he did work hard to follow Jesus, but his life was a mess. And what he heard from some of the folks in the church was that somehow he must not have really accepted Jesus. It must be his fault that his life wasn't all smooth. Sounds a lot like Job and his friends, but no. No, Jesus never promised anyone an easy life. Jesus promised God's love and the joy of eternal life. Jesus promised to be with us and to support us, but those don't translate into easy or smooth. And he told us to pick up our crosses after all. Pick up your cross, that emblem of horrific, shameful death. Pick up your cross and know that your way will not necessarily be simple or smooth. There will be thorns along the way, thorns on your path. In our Luke text, Jesus talks about following him and points out some of the difficulties involved. The first man says, oh, Jesus, I'll follow you wherever you're going. But Jesus doesn't say, oh, great, glad to have you. He responds instead by letting the man know that he doesn't really have a destination, that following him means being on the road, on the path, pretty much perpetually. The son of man has nowhere to lay his head. That's still true, isn't it? When we try to follow Jesus, there will never be an end point at which we can sink back into a comfy chair and say, aha, 
I've arrived. I've followed Jesus all the way. And now I can just sit down and rest my feet. This following Jesus thing is a lifelong journey. The second man responds positively to Jesus' call. Oh, absolutely. Let me just fulfill some other responsibilities first. Let me, let me bury my father first. And that would have seemed completely reasonable at that time and, and maybe does for us now. In that culture, burying one's father was understood as obeying the commandment to honor one's parents. And in this case would have involved not just the burial, but getting all the inheritance sorted out, making sure women in the family were under a man's pr protection and so on. It was important. And in many cases, it would have taken a year or more to accomplish. But Jesus says, let the dead bury the dead. What? Was he telling the guy to just up and renege on all his responsibilities? I think not. Remember that Jesus often used hyperbole, exaggeration, to make his points. As when he said it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to get into heaven. I think we can assume that he didn't mean for us to understand, let the dead bury the dead, literally. What he's saying is that we should not let the demands and responsibilities of our lives get in the way of following him. Jesus' conversation with the second man is reinforced by his interchange with the third, who just wants to go home and say goodbye first, to which Jesus says, don't spend your life looking backward. It's hard to steer a plow that way. That may be one of the best metaphors in the Bible. Think about plowing in the ancient world. First of all, there are oxen pulling the plow to give it the power to cut through tough ground. But in the back is the farmer, and he's making sure that the, that the plow heads in the right direction to make straight furrows for planting. The farmer who is busy looking behind him is going to end up with some very crooked furrows wandering all over the field. Don't spend your life looking backward, Jesus is saying. Rather, keep your eyes on him and guide your life by him. Don't keep looking toward all your other responsibilities, job responsibilities, family responsibilities, even church responsibilities, and steering your life by them. Instead, let following Jesus guide you in everything else you do. So, how do you do at following Jesus? Are there things in your life, thorns along your path that get in the way? One way of making sure we're keeping to the following Jesus path is through an ancient practice called examen. That's E-X-A-M-E-N. This daily examen is a way of reflecting on our lives over the previous 24 hours so that we can begin to see where God is working in our lives, where God is leading us. The purpose of the examen is never a question of being allowed into the kingdom, God's kingdom, or being kicked out of it, because, because God has already chosen you to be one of the family of God. You are already God's beloved child. Instead, the purpose of the examen is kind of like from the song Day by Day, to see thee more clearly, to love thee more dearly, to follow thee more nearly, day by day. And don't panic if you're thinking, I'll never remember the steps for this. They're in your packet in the welcome papers. So find your, your examine bag <clears throat> and uh, find a time when you can pray quietly for at least a few minutes. You're going to first become aware of God's presence with you and sit for that presence, sit with that presence for a bit. 
Second, you're going to pull the dark gray stone or marble from your bag and reflect on a time during your day or during your month or your years when you did not feel like you followed God's will very well. Here, you're essentially looking for the thorns on your path that keep you from following Jesus the way you'd like to. Ask God to forgive you and help you do better. Third, hold the yellow marble and reflect on a time during your day when you were aware of God being with you or you felt that you were in tune with God or when God was blessing you or just a time when you felt happy. Thank God for that experience. And finally, pray in whatever way you feel led, looking forward to tomorrow. So we're going to all do this together now. <clears throat> And if you don't have your stones with you, you can do it without them. So first, I invite you to sit and become aware of God's presence. You can close your eyes if you want or keep them open. Second, hold your darker stone. Was there a time for you over the last 24 hours when you felt like you weren't following Jesus' path very well? Tell God what it was and ask for forgiveness and help moving forward. Hold your yellow stone in your hand and think about a time when it felt like God was really with you, when you were in tune with God. Maybe a time when you just felt happy. Thank God for that time. Let us pray together. Lord, we'd like to follow your path, but sometimes it's full of thorns that get in our way. Help us, nevertheless, to seek each day to see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Help us today and tomorrow to navigate the thorns and always to keep our eyes on you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Our next hymn is Christ of the Upward Way. We'll try that again. One second. Oh, come on. It's not cooperating with me for some reason. All right. Well, why don't we just all read the words and I will lead in that. Christ of the upward way, my guide divine, where you have set your feet, may I place mine and move and march wherever you have trod, keeping face forward up the hill of God. 
Give me the heart to hear your voice and will that without fault or fear, I may fulfill your purpose with a glad and holy zest, like one who would not bring less than the best. Amen. Let's move on to our affirmation of faith, which is a very short snippet from the Heidelberg Catechism uh, from question and answer number 43. By God's power, our old selves are crucified, put to death and buried with him so that the evil desires of the flesh may no longer rule us, but that instead we may offer ourselves as a sacrifice of gratitude to him. Amen. This is the time when we share our prayer concerns that we might lift our prayers as the body of Christ. What are the joys and concerns you would lift today? Just jump on in. Prayers for all the people in Texas and the South that are going through this uh, horrible tragedy. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I have a Thanksgiving. I have a Thanksgiving. Okay. My grandson had the COVID virus and he was trying to stay isolated in their uh, house. And my son and daughter-in-law tried to stay apart. They've been tested and they've both come back negative. So it looks like we're gonna be through the problem and they're gonna survive. Thanks be to God, amen. Barb, I see your hand up. I've got it all moved into my new apartment. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks be to God. Just before the snowstorm. Oh, good timing. Good timing. I had, yes, some, it was one. I had some friends who were moving in during the middle of the storm. Not good timing. Oh. I'm glad. All right, um, Barb. You're muted, Barb. My granddaughter Audrey was released from the hospital several days ago and uh, uh, we're watching to see how things go. She was going to be on our family Zoom Friday evening, but uh, she had had a treatment that day and she said she just wasn't up to coming on. So I've been saying prayers for her and hoping that she continues to improve. Lord, in your mercy. Your um, I would like to ask for prayers for my friend Stephanie. Uh, she found out her job is probably going to be outsourced, and this could go two ways. It could go into her and her family losing half their income and all their insurance, or it could lead to her getting a better job that she likes more in the same organization. So if you could pray for her to have the, the more positive outcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes. Prayers for our neighbor across the street who's been um, having atrial fibrillation and going to be going through some stuff with that. They are two of the truest Christians that we've ever known. They're just beautiful people. And prayers for my Denny Joe as he continues to go through his time here with Parkinson's. He's hanging in tough. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us pray. Lord, oh Lord, all those jokes we used to tell about when Texas freezes over, we didn't mean them, Lord. We didn't know what we were talking about. We pray for all of the people in Texas and Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama whose lives have been upended by the storm and the cold and the insufficient infrastructures for power. We pray for food for those who are hungry, safe shelter for those whose homes are uninhabitable, power for those whose lives depend on health-related machinery, and warmth and potable water for all. May the contributions we have made and continue to make to one great hour of sharing make a difference in their lives, we pray. 
We've heard the stories of families not knowing where their next meal will come from. One in seven families in this country we hear. And we pray, Lord, that you will guide those of us who have full pantries and freezers to help make sure they have food. May the contributions we have made and continue to make to the Equality Toledo Food Pantry make a difference in their lives, we pray. And oh, the people who are ill, who are grieving and lonely and sad, Lord, in your mercy, be with them all. Send your healing love to them and through them, we pray. On all of us who are so tired of isolating at home, of not seeing friends or hugging family, of not trading smiles with strangers in the grocery store aisles. Speed our vaccination process, Lord, in safety and equity, and help us to keep on wearing our masks, standing six feet apart and washing our hands. Help us to take joy in phone calls and Zoom gatherings. Help us to look to the future, your future, with anticipation and peace. This we pray in the name and the spirit of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have an anthem from Lydia, Wade in the Water. Amen. Thank you, Dennis and Lydia. Thank you, 
all of you for your gifts to the church, not just the financial gifts, but your gifts of prayer, your gifts of service, your gifts of fellowship. Thank you for showing up Sunday after Sunday in your living room or wherever you are in your house on Zoom. Thank you for all that you do to make Collingwood Church a good church and to spread the love of God throughout your community. Let us pray together our prayer of dedication and thanksgiving. Compassionate God, we offer you these gifts as signs of our time and labor. Receive the offering of our lives and feed us with your grace that in the midst of death, all creation might feast on your unending life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, go into the world. Keep your eyes on Jesus instead of looking back, knowing that if you keep your eyes on Jesus, everything else will be taken care of. Don't worry about the thorns in your path. Step over them, step around them, keep your eyes on Jesus. And know that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, God is with you, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen.
Amen and amen.